Hello guys, welcome back to another session of Power Automate Basics and this time we are going to discuss about variables. So let's jump into the Power Automate portal where we will understand the variables within the Power Automate. So guys, I am inside the Power Automate portal and this time I am going to create an instant cloud flow and I will choose manually trigger a flow and then click on create. So guys, we are inside a flow and over here to create a variable, we have to first initialize it. So over here, I will come click on new step and then I will search for variable so you will see that we are getting a connector over here called variable and it has these number of actions so, so to use the variable I am going to use initialize variable as the first step towards using the variable within the flow then we need to specify a name so once you insert the initialize variable then you will see it over here we are having type and within the flows all the variables are strongly typed and you will see it over here we are having six types of variables the first one is the boolean integer float string object array so you can create these types of variable inside flow so guys this is about variable type now let's create a variable over here i will call it as var site address and this is going to be a string and in the value field I am going to specify the site address of my SharePoint from where I am going to put the information from the list for example I will come over here and I will grab the site address of lab exercises and go back and I will paste it over here so this variable now holds the site address of the lab exercise so this is going to be I will give a name site address and I will also specify a note holds site address value so why I am keeping the site address inside the variable that is because in many of the scenarios where we want to provide the same value again and again and suppose if you are going to reuse this flow the same logic but at the different tenant then you have to change the site address at multiple places if you are using any connector which is extracting the information from SharePoint site so what I mean to say that let's look into an example so guys in this example I am going to show you repetition of the connector in the flow logic where we can use the variables where we are specifying site address at multiple places so for example over here you will see that for the get items we are specifying the site address we are specifying the approval config now go inside condition then you will find that there is an update item over here also we are specifying the site address over here and you go to the other block over here also you can find that we are having update item here also we are having site address there are many places you are finding the repetition of same value within the flow logic so imagine a situation where you want to use the same code but that is at different tenant and you can imagine that at each of these places you have to update the values for the site address but if you are using the variable then you have to update at single place only so what I mean to say that let's look into with this example I will come over here and I am going to add a step over here and that is going to be get items and I will select get items and over here instead of selecting any site address or specifying any site address I am going to enter the custom value so how I am going to use this variable inside this get items action I will come over here in the dynamic content and I will select where site address and over here for the list name I will create another variable so let me create that I will call add an action variable in slice variable I will give a name where list name and over here I will select a string and I am going to read a list called approval config that is this list so I will click over here you will find that these are the entry it has and suppose I want to read this list to so grab these information so how I will do that I will come over here and write approval config and over here I will specify which list I want to read I will choose into custom value and over here I will select where list name and I will come over here and I am not going to specify any kind of filter query you can specify the filter query as well but for the demonstration purpose I am not going to specify any of the filter query if you are not specifying any filter query then you will see that it is throwing a warning over here you will go inside that it is telling that updating action get item to use o data filter query can improve the performance so in short it is telling that you have to apply some filter query over here so that 
it will return less data for our case it is not required because we are having only three entries so now let's run this and let's look into that with the help of variable am i able to get the result from this action or not so let's save it and let's run it i will come over here click on test manually test continue run flow and click on done once you've done that then over here you will see that it has executed successfully now over here you go inside and you will find that it is extracting all the information tech support then you will come over here then you will find that other entries as well you will find that other support and there is hr support so and if you go inside the list you will find that we are having the same entry so guys this is about how to use variables within the flow so let's proceed further now over here you will find it more powerful when you are having multiple places where you are having the same information so what i mean to say that let's look with an example so i will come over here click on new step and this time i am going to use update item and this is the action from the sharepoint connector i will select this one and over here you will find that it is asking for site address so what i can do instead of specifying the site address i will come over here and choose the enter custom value and i will select where site address and over here for the list name i am going to come over here select enter list name and over here i will select list name and you will see it over here it is asking for the id or dynamic logic you can specify the dynamic value but for our case i am going to specify the static value because i just wanted to demonstrate the capability of the variable over here and over here for the item remember that all the items should go in the form of json for example if i want to update the value of the title column over here you need to specify the value in the form of json so for example if i want to update the title so i will specify title and the value what the new value i want to specify so let's look into the sharepoint list for the current value so over here you will find that id number 2 has tech support so i am going to pass new tech support so i will come over here and i will write new tech support and then i will run it again so for save it and now click on test so over here click on test run flow done and now you will find that with a single variable you are able to pass the same information to two different actions and it is very powerful whenever if you want to migrate the same logic to other tenant you just go to the site address or list variable but over here you just need to specify the site address over here so it will pick up that site address whichever you want to point it so it is very powerful when you are working with the complex scenario within the flows so next i want to discuss about the api calls over here you will find that there are multiple steps and each step is counted as single api call and if you are using multiple variables then for each variables it is counted as an api call and that is very intensive when you are designing the large flow because if you are using because if you are using e5 license of 365 it only offers 2000 api call per day so guys this way of creating the variables is very much api intensive and that i want to avoid it but parallelly i want to use the variable within our flow logic so now the question over here is how we can reduce the number of api calls for the variables so guys the solution for this problem is we are going to create an object variable and where we will keep all the variables which we are going to use within the flow logic so what i mean to say that let's look into with an example so over here i will create add an action and again i am going to write variable over here and from the variable connector i am going to select initialize a variable and this time i am going to tell it as var application context and over here i will select object and object i am going to keep the variable into the json format so what i mean to say that I will create a JSON object over here and within that I am going to keep the variable which we want to use. So over here I will create a key value pair. For example, if I want to use site address, I will write, I will create a key called var app site address and over here I will specify the value which I will grab from this place. I will come over here, I will grab this value. So let me grab it and I will come here 
paste it now i want to create a variable for the list name i will create another key over here called var list name and this time i am going to specify the value approval config and i will call it as application context and i am going to delete these thing i don't want to use this one then i will delete this one as well now the question over here is how i can use this variable that is where application context into these actions so to access this variable we need to follow this syntax so let's look into with an example i will come over here remove this one remove this one as well and i will come here i will write an expression so what expression i will write so i will call it as variables and within that i need to specify the variable name over here we are having where application context i will come here expression variables and over here i will specify variable where application context and i want to access this key where app site address so how i will access it with the square bracket and within that i need to specify this name the key name i will call it as where app site address site address copy this one click ok and for the list name i am going to specify over here expression i will use the same one but this time i am going to call it as where list name click on ok now this is with the get item i will do the same with the update item i will come over here i will paste the expression which i have copied ok and over here close this one expression paste it where list name so i am done with the update and now this time we are using an object variable and i am using the keys which we have defined over here for our configuration for these actions so now let's save it and over here it is telling update item is not there let me check it it is missed over here but by the way i just wanted to show you the result the output of previous run where we have sent the value new x support let's verify that as well along with this activity so over here you will find that it has updated at that time now i am going to revert it back with tech support value itself so that we will complete the cycle so i will come over here and i will write title and over here i will specify tech support i will revert it back again and save it now let's click on test and over here run flow done and now you will find that it has ran successfully and with the help of a single variable we are able to use at multiple places and you will see that it is extracting the value for site address as well as value for the list name so this is how you can reduce the number of variables within your application so let's verify the output once again so over here you will find that it has reverted back to tech support because i have updated it with the help of update item action so now i am done with the example over here before closing this session i wanted to show you some of the real time application which i have developed for one of my client and over here you will find that i have used the same concept and over here i have defined all the variables over here which is going to be used inside the flow logic and you will find i have used array variable i have used boolean variable over here then i have used another array variable over here array variable with the values i have used strings over here and if you go for those then you will find that i have used within our application over here i have used the same pattern where i am accessing the object variable and the key which i am accessing is the site address and that is what it is returning me the value of that particular key so you will find it at many places i have used the same pattern so i would recommend that you should always follow this pattern with the help of this you are able to create a robust flow logic so guys i will recommend that you should follow this pattern so on this note i am stopping over here see you in the next session till then bye bye take care